Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Lando. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about Apoquil, Apoquil or Oclacitinib. This is a drug that was approved by the FDA in 2013. It's a veterinary medicine. It's only for dogs. It's not for humans. It's an anti-itch medicine that you see advertised all the time on television these days. Now, the drug is officially indicated for use in atopic dermatitis. That's like in childhood eczema, but in dogs instead of humans. And it's for the itch that's associated with the atopic dermatitis in dogs who are at least 12 months of age. Now, some believe that you should treat just the acute condition, do that for a short period of time. Other people believe that, well, since the condition tends to flare, you could use a maintenance dose in addition. There's some disagreement about that. Right now we know that there's already a creep in the indication, so some people are using it for the itch due to flea infestations. When the medicine's used, it's used twice a day to start for up to 14 days. And then afterward for maintenance could be used once a day. It can be given with or without food and stop it without tapering the dose is on the basis of the dog's weight. So you weigh the dog in pounds, then you multiply that by 0 0.18 to 0 0.27. That's the range of therapy. And to make matters easier, there are three different dose forms of the medicine. It comes in 3.6 milligram, 5.4 milligram, 16 milligram pills. So you pick the combination that's right for your dog on the basis of the weight. Does it work? Well, the University of Wisconsin Veterinary Center says, yeah, in about half of the animals. Partially works about 30% of the animals, just doesn't work in 20%. There's an important caveat to the rules using the medicine. If you give it to your dog, immediately afterward, wash your hands. You don't want to accidentally touch your eye. If you accidentally touch your eye, rinse the eye out with water or saline then call the eye doctor if you happen to take it by mistake instead of your own pill. Well, then call poison control or call your doctor. Medicine seems to begin to work relatively quickly. Within one day, seems to improve about 30% of the animals compared to about 5% with placebo. After about a month, about half of the animals are significantly improved versus only about 10% receiving the placebo. We look at the rating of success in another study after about a month of therapy. Owners say, it's successful therapy two-thirds of the time. The veterinarians say, well, maybe about half of the time it's successful. Looking at animals treated at 26 different veterinary hospitals, well, the percent success with Apoquil is about two-thirds, placebo about one-third, but about 15% of the animals were discontinued from the Apoquil group because the actual disease got worse. Now, there are different kind of rating scales, but it seems that by day seven, according to the owners, the animal's itch was only very mild to mild, whereas in animals receiving placebo, the itch was mild to moderate. Shouldn't be used in animals who are less than 12 months of age because it might cause a flare of something known as demodicosis, that's disseminated mite infections shouldn't be used in animals that are less than six and a half pounds, and shouldn't be used in animals that have potential increased risk. And increased risk are animals who have lumps and tumors or history of cancer or history of serious infection or immunosuppression. Those dogs aren't appropriate for treatment. And it seems that the 12 month of age starting group is appropriate because animals treated before one year of age, have a higher incidence of bacterial pneumonia and generalized mange and other kind of problems while receiving therapy. And by the way, it's not for use in breeding dogs or pregnant dogs or lactating dogs, and it's not been studied in combination with steroids or other medicine for atopic dermatitis like atopica that's used in dogs, that's like the sporin that we use in humans, or other immunosuppressive drugs. And again, the animals with those other conditions that I mentioned have to stay away from. Well, the medicine is well absorbed, reaches the peak concentration in the blood within less than an hour, about 90% of the medicine's bioavailable. Seems to have a plasma binding of somewhere between 65 and 
That means there's a significant amount that's free and available for action inside the body. It's metabolized into a variety of different chemicals, but there's only one major oxidative metabolite that's found in the plasma and in the urine. The half-life of the medicine is about four hours, doesn't interfere with other drugs' metabolism, supposedly. Seems that the liver is where it's metabolized, goes out in the feces, some goes out in the urine. There's a little problem with some of the vaccines. So if you happen to have a dog that needs vaccination with the modified live canine para-influenza virus vaccine, uh, probably not going to work. Some of the other vaccines do work even though the animal is receiving this kind of medicine. The medicine is not a steroid. It's not an antihistamine. It acts to inhibit production of cytokines. It falls into the family of synthetic JAK inhibitors, J-A-K. Originally the J-A-K just stood for just another kinase. It was changed, made more sophisticated. Now it stands for Janus kinase. Well, there are four members of the Janus kinase family. There's JAK1, JAK2, JAK3, JAK4 is really known as tyrosine kinase. It seems that the Apoquel affects more the JAK1 than the JAK3. It doesn't seem to have much effect on JAK2, which is good because that's where the blood cells are controlled. Under normal circumstances, certain kinds of cytokines hit the surface of the cell. They activate the Janus kinase or the JAK, and then that in combination with another chemical known as STAT, migrate to the nucleus, and in the nucleus, they signal the production of pro-inflammatory molecules, interleukin, interleukin 2 and 4 and 6 and 13 and 31. Well, with the Apoquil, it inhibits the Janus kinase from doing all of that, and as a result, we have less of those interleukins that are produced, and because less of the interleukins are produced, then the itch tends to go down. Well, it seems that it's highly effective in dogs, especially in the short term, pretty safe in dogs in the short term. Long term, we just don't really know. Seems it might have some effect on the liver function test, might have some effect on the white blood cells. Some questions. What are the side effects of the medicine? Well, pyoderma in about 12%, infection of the skin, about 12%. Lumps in the skin, about 12%. Otitis, about 10%. Vomiting, about 9%. Diarrhea in a significant percent. And then some animals develop a lack of appetite or lethargy or infection in the bladder. Some can develop some problems with swelling of the nodes or aggressive behavior. Some animals have some darkening of the skin and the fur. Sometimes the cholesterol can go down, the white blood count can go down, the cells that fight infection go down, cells responsible for allergies also go down, so that might be good. The lymphocytes, they can transiently go down for a short while. Study was done in beagle dogs, 12-month-old beagle dogs, they were given the normal dose or three times the normal dose or five times the normal dose for a period of study that lasted about 20 weeks. They were examined. It was found that five of the animals developed microscopic evidence of mild interstitial pneumonia. There was some change in the cellularity of the bone marrow. There was some change in the blood cells study looked at 280 dogs. Well, one of the dogs developed severe dermatitis and severe pyoderma. Another developed the generalized mite infection. Had two animals that had either suspected or confirmed malignancies and were euthanized. Another three animals were hospitalized, one for pneumonia, one for vomiting and putting out blood in the stool, another one for cystitis and stones. Another study looked at dogs treated for about a year with the medicine, about 240 dogs, had a variety of complications including severe bronchopneumonia, disseminated mite infection. One of the animals had to be euthanized because of fluid that was developing in the abdomen in the pleural cavity. Six more had to be euthanized because of suspected malignancy. 
There were a variety of other kind of tumors that developed, and the veterinary oncologists suggest that about 5% of animals, average age about 9, going to develop tumors, either suspected or confirmed, within about a year to a year and a half of beginning the therapy. Now, the company claims that it's safer than most of the JAK inhibitors we use in humans. They say the side effects are relatively limited. Well, that remains to be seen, at least as far as the long-term basis is concerned. They say there are no drug interactions, but it really hasn't been tested with a lot of drugs. company bases their evaluation on the side effects on the work of a uh, Dr. Cosgrove who published papers in 2013-2015 and in those papers there were urinary tract infections and vomiting and otitis, ear infections and pyoderma and diarrhea and somewhere between 5 and 10 percent of the animals. Well, it got the attention, at least some of the advertising and the website of the company got the attention of the FDA Center for Veterinary Medicines. They looked at it and said, you know, you guys are giving a false and misleading representation about the risks associated with the Apoquil. You're not giving us all of the information, you're not giving the people who are considering using it all of the information. You say it's safe, on the other hand, you haven't really studied it with a combination of some of the drugs that you're saying it's safer than. And you say it can be used with other medicines and we really don't have any evidence that it's safely used and you're talking about how it's free of side effects. That's short term, long term it seems that there are more side effects. So the FDA said, hey, stop immediately and change your advertising. Bring it around to the truth. Now, as a matter of fact, we in human medicine use the JAK inhibitors for rheumatoid arthritis, a variety of different types of arthritis. There's Lumion, there's Zelgance, there's Rinvoq that was just recently approved. Those medicines, principally for rheumatoid arthritis, they're being evaluated for atopic dermatitis in people. But here's the side effects of Zelgins. This is from the package insert. You can see the bright black box warning, warning of serious infections and mortality and malignancy and thromboses. And then you can see the serious infections and the tuberculosis and the reactivation of the viruses and the mortality and the blood clotting or thromboses and GI perforation and hypersensitivity and laboratory abnormalities and problems with vaccination. So if you're going to give this medicine to your dog. Dog really needs to be followed, followed for infections, followed for tumors. This isn't just one of those things that you give on a capricious basis. You say, oh, I saw the ad on the television. I think we should try this. Well, itch isn't a disease. Itch is a manifestation of some kind of underlying issue. And the issue might be atopic dermatitis, or it might be an allergy, or it might be uh, an infection, or it might be a bite. So you need to evaluate your animal. Does it have a staph infection? Does it have a yeast infection with malassezia? Does it have the demodex or a flea or a tick? Does it have some other kind of issue? And as a matter of fact, on study, only about 20% of the dogs who itch, itch because of atopic dermatitis. So the overwhelming majority have other reasons for itch. And that could be the flea allergy or parasites or seasonal allergies, just like we get in humans. Could be a food allergy, could be a contact dermatitis because of the soap you're using or some perfume you're putting on the animal. If we look at the atopic dermatitis in animals and dogs, it tends to begin between one and three years of age, it tends to be in more in purebreds and in terriers and retrievers and the brachiocephalic type animals, those are the short nose and face like the pugs and the shih tzus and the chihuahuas. Same kind of standard sites that we find in humans around the eyes, around the ears, around the mouth. We find it around the elbow and the paw and the abdomen and the belly. It's on the tail in animals. Sometimes it can progress over a period of time and they can develop allergic rhinitis, runny nose, or allergic conjunctivitis, teary eyes, red eyes. Doesn't progress to asthma as it does in humans. Animals because of their contact, could easily be an allergic reaction to something, allergic reaction to uh, dust or a pollen or allergic reaction to a food. 
And as a matter of fact, there's no standard criteria to make the diagnosis in the animals. If you were to take a dog from one veterinarian to another, you would find that there are a variety of diagnoses that are made. So when you're considering treating a dog for atopic dermatitis, you need to have some grasp of reality over how bad the situation is and over how aggressive you should be on therapy. You don't jump into a medicine that's going to suppress the body's immune system. So you could consider some probiotics maybe, or you could consider some of the topical steroids. There are a variety of topical steroids for humans and for animals. Antihistamines work in a fair number of animals. Then there are a variety of shampoos and change in the diet and use soft water, add some moisturizer to the skin, change the frequency of bathing. If you do those things, then you might not need to progress on to a medicine like Apoquil because Apoquil, while it seems like it is the answer to a problem, it might be overkill for some of the animals. It might be putting them at risk, and you saw that we talked about the number of animals that had to be euthanized while on therapy. Well, something to consider. Is medicine expensive? It all depends. It's not expensive, certainly compared to the human medicines that are outrageous. From wholesalers, you can get the pill for about $2.20. Doesn't matter what strength you're taking. So anyway, We've progressed now from where we advertise DTC, that stands for direct-to-consumer. For the human medicines, now we're doing it for animal medicines. I think it's kind of troubling because a lot of people are taking medicines principally because of what they see advertised on the TV. And the fear is that a lot of animals are going to be given medicines that have more side effects than the people realize for a diagnosis that may or may not be accurate. So if your pet suffers from excessive itch, consider the options and always go from the simplest option, the safest option, and then go up from there and consider a change in environment. Just the same thing as we would do if a person had atopic dermatitis. Yes, all of these same kind of medicines are available and we always start with a change in environment, a change in bathing change in some of the moisturizers that we use and then we go up from there to the antihistamines and the topical steroids and probably the same thing should be done in animals. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please tell a friend, consider subscribing and you'll be notified when we post new videos. I appreciate your interest. I'm Dr. Ken Landon.